Yo, what's going on guys, it's Houston Sports Talk back in another video day. And today the Houston Rockets beat the Oklahoma City Thunder 119 to 116 and get the dub. One of the best wins for the Rockets in the entire season. And the Rockets improved to 15 and 6, 9 and 3 at home. Unbelievable at home. OKC goes to 15 and 5. And just like that, the Rockets are half a game back from being number one in the Western Conference. It's absolutely crazy to say with everything this team has been through in the last four years. Last year was a really good year. They were 41 and 41. They had a really good season. Um, and there were at ten, there were at times early in the year where they where they were looking really good and uh, were at least in the top six, top five in the West. I think maybe at the highest they reached the four seed really, really early in the season when the Rockets were playing well in the November December range last season. Uh, but never were they at the point where there was a one seed uh, in Dece or you know near a one seed in December or exactly at the two seed. Um, then you want to go over all the bad years. 2022-23 season, 2021-22 season, uh, 2020-21 season, the Rockets were solid to start off the year, but things then heavily went downhill. Um, so it, the Rockets haven't really been near the one seed in a while. I don't even think over the last couple good good years the Rockets had, they were near the one seed. I'm not sure. The Rockets might have been at some point might have been the one seed in the 2019-20 season I'm not sure I know down you know down the later roads of the year they weren't uh but maybe earlier in the year the Rockets might have been the one seed earlier in the year but they didn't finish as the one seed and I know for sure the Rockets weren't the one seed at all at any point in the 2018-19 season because that was the year they started off one in five and uh never were really able to get back to being the one seed and they finished the four seed that year in the 2018-19 season and then obviously 2017-18 season was the was exactly the year they were the one seed but for the Rockets to be in the position to potentially claim that number one spot which they have not done in a while um if they did not do it in the 2019-20 season they definitely have not been the number one seed since the 17-18 season back when they finished the year as the number one seed and went to the Western Conference Finals. So, unbelievable win, and now they're half a game back from the Western Conference. I will say it is a little bit tricky because the Thunder next three games, they have uh, the Jazz, the Raptors, and the Pelicans. That's not... You're trying to catch up to a one seed, to a team that is playing pretty good basketball. Uh, you're half a game... You know, you're half a game back, and they're playing those three teams. That's not great. Now, here's the good thing, guys. Rockets, in the span of when the Thunder play those next three games, the Rockets only play two games, and those two games are against the Sacramento Kings, who are having a really hard time this year, and then the Golden State Warriors, who, yes, the Warriors have been really good at times this year uh, and have played some good basketball. The Warriors have really been struggling as of late, and so the Rockets – even though the Thunder play three games against two, th sorry, sorry, against three really bad teams, the Rockets on the other end um, are only playing two games and playing to two team playing against two teams who have been struggling as of late. Let's get into this game. This was an unbelievable game. Rockets first time this season they've won a game tr going into the fourth quarter trailing. On the other end, first time this year the Oklahoma City Thunder have lost a game. Going into the third quarter winning. Or sorry, going into the fourth quarter winning. So unbelievable that the Rockets are able to snap that uh, streak of, you know, trailing into the fourth quarter and not not being able to win basketball games and then also end the Thunder streak on you know at the same time. So you love to see it. Um and um you know Let's get into let's get into some stats. All right, one nineteen to one sixteen was the final score. Fred Van Vliet was fantastic, man. He was phenomenal. Thirty eight points, um, season high. I mean, it was a, hell. It was a season high when he got to thirty one points. He's had some great games this year. More of recent, he's had some great games. He's been playing great basketball as a recent, but uh, this was hit definitely his best. Thirty eight points, got to the free throw line more than anyone on the team. Um, Albert Chagun had eight free throw attempts. That was that was that was. Um, that was basically almost half of what Shane, of, of sorry, of what Van Vliet had. Fourteen free throw attempts for Fred. Thirteen for fourteen at the line. Five for nine for three. Had a absolute crazy grenade three pointer. Um, that you know was a jump ball. Five seconds left. Shingun was able to tip the ball to Jalen. 
for a minute. I, look, to me, I just feel like, I mean, Jalen, to me it looked like Jalen didn't really know how much time was left on the, you know, on the shot clock um, because there was, there was about, there was about five se- there was five seconds left when the jump ball happened on the shot clock, um, you know, and Jalen got the ball, started dribbling a little bit, and then threw the ball to Van Vliet, who was way back, and Van Vliet had to shoot it at the buzzer, um, you know, at the shot clock, and and actually, you know, beat it, and and and, and the ball went in. The Rockets took a one thirteen to one ten lead. That was and that was that was big for the Rockets because the Rockets ended up winning by three in this game, one one nineteen to one sixteen. So Van Vliet was incredible, and another really strong second half for Al Prunchingu. And this has been key over the last three games, over the last three wins, is second half performances from Al P. Uh, he finishes with twenty points, fourteen rebounds, nine assists. Look, I'm not going to tell you that Shingu had a terrible first half. You know, he wasn't great at scoring in the first half, but, you know, he had he had six points. I think it was four or five rebounds, four assists. So it's not terrible, but you compare it to what he did in the second half. It, I, I, it is terrible with what you look at what Al P was able to accomplish in the second half. He had 20 points to finish the ballgame, which means he had 16 second half points. He had 14 rebounds, which means... I think he had nine or nine or ten rebounds. I'm not sure if, if he finished the first half with four or five rebounds, so that means he had nine or ten rebounds in the second half. And he finished the game with nine assists, so five assists in the second half. So absolute amazing performance. And I and I and I think his block, the block that he had in this game, uh, also came in the second half. Unbelievable in the second half. And this is the third game in a row now that where Al P is absolutely insane in the second half. Uh, 38 minutes for Shingun tonight. It's one of his highest of the year. 7 for 17. 0 for 1 from 3. 6 for 8 from the free throw line. Um, Jabari Smith Jr. with a double-double. 15 points, 14 rebounds, 3 blocks. It's good to see Jabari have a good game against the Thunder tonight because Jabari's, as, as you know, actually in his career has had some good success against the Thunder. Um, has always tried to, you know, pay them back for not drafting him. And then, you know, when the Rockets met against the Thunder earlier in the year, about a month ago, um, in OKC, Jabari absolutely was playing terrible. Um, and got, I mean, he didn't get benched, but he, he didn't get a lot of minutes. I don't think he played much more than 20 minutes in the, the game in OKC. So you love to see Jabari have success against a team that he's had a success, some success against in his career. Um, have 15 points, 14 rebounds, three blocks, and he's been great defensively these last couple games. Uh, you love to see him have a performance like this against the Thunder with what we saw last game from him against this team. Brooks was mainly great in the first half. I mean, I think he had 10 points in the first quarter, something like that, or or near 10 points. Uh, but he, he finishes with 16 points, seven rebounds, three assists, six for 11, two for four. Two for two at the free throw line. He did hit. He did hit a big shot. The game was tied at one thirteen. He had a big turnaround two point jumper to give the Rockets a one fifteen to one thirteen lead. That was big in the second half. Um, Jalen Green not so much of, of greatness in this game. Uh, two for six, one for three from three, nine points, three assists, two rebounds, um, four turnovers. I will say the the one good thing that Jalen one of the best things I saw Jalen do was in this game was. You know, get get the ball to Fred uh, for that shot at the end of the you know at the you know as the clock was going down on the you know on the you know for the for the you know grenade Fred Van Vliet three pointer from near half court, but th- that wasn't the smartest thing to do if we're going to be honest. Look, I think that was a great thing that the rock that happened for the Rockets, but um, that's not the best shot. It was it was a great shot for the Rockets, but. I don't. the The decision wasn't great by Jalen. Uh, it, thank God it worked out though for for the team. Um, but honestly, it wasn't a terrible night for Jalen. I mean, he didn't take a bunch of shots. He shot two for six, so you can't really attack him on not shooting well when he didn't shoot that much. Did get to the free throw line. My only complaint is why are we seeing Jalen? getting minutes late in the fourth quarter, not Amen Thompson. Amen Thompson wasn't having an amazing night, uh, but shot four for 11 when two of those misses were from three. So shot four for nine from the mid-range and, you know, when on mid-range shots and, you know, shooting in the paint. Had six rebounds in 26 minutes, had an assist. Obviously, he brings great defense. Um, he was not as good defensively tonight as he's been in the last couple games. 
But I think I'd much rather have a Men Thompson, you know, in the closing minutes than Jalen Green. I mean, we saw we saw we saw both of them, but we saw more of Jalen than a Men Thompson in the closing minutes. Um, or, or 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 you know, just got the fact that Jalen played more minutes. Jalen had thirty four, Men had twenty six. But Tari Eason, two for eight. Um, he, I mean, he was good defensively tonight. He had two steals, one block, six points, five rebounds. But shooting wise, these last two or three games have not been great for Tari Eason. Two for eight, one for five tonight. Steve Adams did score one point and had one rebound, um, one for two at the free throw line. Only four minutes for Stephen, though, so you can't really, it's hard to judge that. Reed Shepard, five points, one steal, one for five from the floor, one for four from three. He had a solid night in 10 minutes. Jeff Green, Cam Whitmore, Jay Sean Tate, Jack Lando, Jack McVay, Aaron Holiday, all DMPs. Great win for the Rockets tonight, 119-116. You love to see the Rockets get a win like this. One thing I want to say, this was a great, this was a great performance by the Rockets, but I'm going to also say this is the best performance I've seen from our fans in years. The, I, I don't know if the Rockets win this game without, without the energy of the fans from this game tonight. I don't think I've seen Toyota Center as hyped up in this game in four years. Um, you know, like, look, last year was a good year. The Rockets finished 41 and 41, had that winning streak. I, I, you know, but I, I, at the same time, I thought there were a lot of games last year, even though the Rockets were playing better, where there were not enough fans in the crowd. I mean, you got to be selling more tickets. I thought, I thought the Rockets had a great crowd tonight. I think. I've heard Toyota Center the loudest I've heard Toyota Center in four years. And without the presence of Toyota Center and the, the Rockets fans tonight, I don't think the Rockets win this basketball game. It all starts with the fans. Um, excellent show out by our fans. I would have been. I would have loved to have been at the game tonight. Uh, I still have not gone to a regular season game. Um, I, I went to one of the preseason games. Was that against the... I think it was against the Pelicans, I think. Um, I still want to go to my first regular season of the game this year. We'll see if that can happen before uh, 2025 begins. But I need to make my contri- you know, contribution to, you know, to, to, you know, make Toyota Center louder. But anyways, I thought the fans that were at the game tonight did a hell of a job to hype the team up. You know, just, uh, you know I, I thought Toyota Center was the loudest I've heard in, in a while. Um, and you know, since since the James Harden trade, let me know your thoughts on the Rockets winning one nineteen to one sixteen against Oklahoma City Thunder in the comment section. And peace out.